Central. With me today, I have one of the diaspora greatest producers in the United States. That is Mr. Kobe Maxwell by way of Ghana, ladies and gentlemen. Kobe. Yes, sir. <laughs> Welcome to Diaspora Central, brother. Thank you. Thank you, Gil. Thank yeah, you. so, so Thank how you. has it been, man? Oh yeah, it's been uh, it's been good. It's uh -huh. been hectic. You know, yeah. we keep pushing, we keep pushing the the dream and you know the the, the African talent and culture and uh, you know and um and the creativity. So it's it's always we always on the move and we always trying to bring something new to the to the public and to the you know to the to the world in general for showing what you know African talent is all about. What we can do. Yeah, and that's why this show is Diaspora Central because the two definitions of what diaspora is and what central is makes this show the proper place to showcase our talent and the talent of individuals that actually paved the way because the lack of documentation sometimes makes people who have actually paved the way just go away unnoticed yeah, without yeah, forgot, and, and their history, forgot, right? Their history gets forgotten and never told. So this is the place where we actually get to tell their history. So let's go ahead and start with you. Now, you are originally from what country? I'm originally from Ghana, mm -hmm. um, but you know, Africa is always part of me. Africa is first. Right. <laughs> but originally from Ghana. Yeah. Now, give, let's kind of go back and start in Ghana because uh, you have a very interesting story. And I know a lot about you because, I mean, we, we, have, um, we, we have worked together for many years and known each other for quite a while. But for our audience, um, in Ghana, to, I mean, in, today in America, most people know you for for making for being a producer, primarily of movies and things of that sort. But in Ghana, that was not really your thing. So let's go back to Ghana and start with the Kobe Maxwell from Ghana. Okay, how old were you, and what was it that got you into the entertainment industry? Well, I'm starting from Ghana. I mean, as as Kobe Maxwell, everybody know me in Ghana as a bass player, right? Uh, a musician who played instrument. Mm -hmm. And we were young kids that, you know, group of us, the most youngest people, professional musicians you will find in the country. Right. And I was the bass player of that group. And at the age of 12 to age of 15, I'm already on stage with him as a you Masakela. <laughs> yeah. That, that's not a little name in, in the music industry. That's a big Correct. name in the African music Correct. industry. Correct. May, yeah. may his soul rest in peace. And Indeed. all that he done for Africa. Indeed. You know, so so when you talk about Kobe Maxwell, in back home, they know Kobe Maxwell as a musician, the bass player, the right. singer, uh, who was with a band called Amazing Six. Uh -huh. That we played with, you know, him as a Kela, Mary Makuba. Um, Marion Makeba. Yes, yes you, sir. You're talking about the Miriam Makeba from yes, South sir. Africa. Yeah, from South Africa. He was a kind of Indeed. <laughs> you yeah. know, Manu Dibango and, you Ma know. Manu so, Dibango. Yes, sir. So, so you know, Makosa, so Makosa, Manu Dibango. Makosa. Yes, the sir. Manu Dibango. Dude, that, yes, that, that, that's, so, le so that's goes, legendary. Yes, yes, sir. <laughs> we, were, we were that young, but we were, we were so good that right. any, any international artist that comes to Ghana for a show, mm -hmm. um, Either we are the first on the stage to play with, or we are the first to open the stage for um, them. For, for them. Wow. So that's that's where the career started until I I migrated to to the United States. Right. And started recording as an artist of myself, mm -hmm. and that put me about five albums on my belt. Yeah. But before um, before we even get to the United States, I, I want I want to stay in Africa for a little bit because uh, I, I want to find out who were your influences as a kid? I mean, was it mom, dad, cousin, somebody had to be some sort of an influence to you or there was no influence. You were just one of those guys that picked up an instrument and, and said, you know what, this is my instrument. Let me go. No, well, obviously they always get inspiration from someone. I, mm -hmm. but you know, it's always believe, I believe that it's always the talent is there. Right. Um, and you just needed an exposure or opportunity to be able to, to explore the talent. Right. And I think, uh, my, my class, my elementary school teacher was my inspiration. He's a guitarist. Okay. And you know, in school time he plays, sometimes he brings his boss guitar and he's playing mm -hmm. and I'm always you know, not joining the kids, playing, but sticking around him, right? And watching him, and the opportunity Play got the itself because he he started to date my aunt, <laughs> and by dating my aunt, I became the one he sends me to call my aunt. Got you. So, you, so you you were you were the message boy. 
I was the betweener. There you go. <laughs> you were the email. And, and, email. And my and my benefit my benefit of it is for him to teach me how to play uh, guitar. Oh, so not, guitar not. was the first instrument he, he started me. But I was so fast to play bass, mm -hmm. and he needed a bass player yeah. to play in his band. So he quickly uh, pushed me into bass guitar. Got you. Um, you know, to become a bass player for his gospel band in okay. our local village town. Wow. So so then, <laughs> that, that's an. <laughs> <laughs> That's an interesting thing, man. <laughs> Kobe Maxwell was the email. Yeah, nobody have pulled this up. Nobody have pulled this message up. <laughs> right. <laughs> no, no, but that, that's good. See, that's good thing because see, as 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 the message, as as the the messenger or the email, as it would be considered today, right? You were the email being sent between him and your aunt. Now, did he marry your aunt? Yeah, they did. They, so didn't have, they actually you know, get. So they actually got married. <laughs> So, yeah, they did. And, and have a kid. So, oh, and they have a child. Oh, they oh, all right. Did. Now, what, what, what is the teacher's name? Uh, his name is Ogo. Ogo. All right. So, yeah. shout out to Mr. Ogo huh, for, for, <laughs> for setting up one of diaspora's greatest uh, minds that is definitely, and, and I, I would say pioneer, and I say pioneer because you have been in some of the trenches with me in which we have actually paved way for certain things in the diaspora. And, and, and that's what we're going to go into, in, into right now. So at that point, uh, actually, before we go into that, because that's already going to be in the U.S., I, I want to do something else in Africa. So when you go back to those days in Africa, what are the things that I guess become more, that, that have marked you the most and, and have somewhat forged your character? That you that today you recognize it as being things that definitely have marked you and have made you become who you have become. Well, again, like I said, as as young as we were, we were dreaming to become the most, the best in the world. Mm -hmm. um, we we as kids, we we explored every opportunity to to look at those who have made it. Mm -hmm. Like I said, Salif Keita, Yusuf Undo, right. uh, Man, uh, um, Manidi Bango. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and my, our group, my my keyboard player, you can explore Kwame Yeboa. And okay. Kwame Yeboa is the greatest keyboard player right now in the diaspora as well, but he lives in London. Right. And, you know, if you see him on with Cat, St Cat Stevens, mm -hmm. and name is Steven Wonder, that's right. my brother, we started together. Right. And, you know, he's still doing the music, you know, all over the world he's playing. Mm -hmm. But we we were inspired to become the OCBSs of the world. Got you. know, you. Um, play like that. We, we want to become the next... Jaco Pastor Luz. I there want to be, he want to become Chico Rea. He want to become Mani Dibango, Self Keita. In right. So those are our inspiration that mm -hmm. we want to play like them or more than them. So that, that basically so, forged you. So, so you 12 years old, you get into music from 12 through 15. Music is basically your passion, your everything. You start in guitar and you end up on bass. Right. All right. So we're going to take a very quick break because, um, in the process of this break, we're going to go ahead and listen to one of your songs. So which one of your songs do you think we should listen to? <laughs> I don't know how far you want to go. But <laughs> um, we, we can, as long as the song has a video, that's what we need. We need we need something with visuals that people can actually appreciate the visuals. So, okay. yeah. All right, so I, I would say let's throw a, a, a Biba. Okay, so all right, let's go into this break with uh, Biba by Kobe Maxwell. And you are listening to the Aspora Central
Abiba lives. <laughs> Central with Gil Inglés and today with me I have by way of Ghana in Washington DC Mr. Kobe Maxwell or should I say diaspora super producer Mr. Busy Man Kobe Maxwell Kobe you still with us I'm with you <laughs> all right <laughs> let's now start talking about your career here in the United States so you arrive in the United States huh? what was your port of entry let's even start there Uh, J JFK. <laughs> JFK, New York City. What, what, what was your first impression of um, the United States as soon as well, you arrived? Well, well, first of all, I had just finished a tour in Europe. We just finished six month tour in Europe, the whole European countries. Mm -hmm. And from there, we, we got booked to come to the States. So we went back to Ghana. Right. Um, and right about a week or two, we came to the States. Uh, that was my first time in the United States with a band. So we right. came to tour for about four weeks. So you, so you basically, so at that point, and, and how old are you approximately? I'm, I'm trying to gauge time. I think I was 17. So you, so you 17 years old, you, you already traveling the world as a professional musician, as a bass player. And you have seen all of these countries that you probably at some point have dreamed about visiting. And yes. all of a sudden you now land in the United States. Now, was the United States one of those countries that you have always wanted to meet, to, to, to come to? Yes, mm -hmm. yes, that is absolutely, so, as, as, as we're young kids back home, right? I'm like, you know, the Tupac of, of my, 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 my peers. Like, oh, oh, you're the Tupac, you're the Tupac of your peers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I always, I always pull yeah. up like, you know, like a black American. I'm, you know, wearing a hoodie and stuff like that, you know, but got you. It's okay. Let's not so, go far back like that. No, no, no. It's good. It's good to go far back like that because see today, today, not today that kind of lays the, the blade, the lays the, lays the path that even your children now, one day will be able to listen to this conversation and be like, okay, so I'm sort of more like that on this. And because, uh, you know, those things get passed on. They don't stay with us. They, it's just energy that comes through us and and it moves on into into our own too yeah yeah, yeah. so it's I mean, definitely it's definitely a good thing to share it so so basically you land in new york city you look around the first thing in that you saw in new york city that you said okay now this is what i'm talking about uh what was it um the first thing that impressed you the most well first of all when we land You know the you know the energy, the welcoming, and mm -hmm. you know the atmosphere, the environment. We felt at home because okay. remember we are just coming from European, you know, European tour, mm -hmm. and you know you can see the demographic in Europe to here was right. completely different. Right there, we see you know our brothers and sisters in the right. in all over the place, and we can feel comfortable that I can you know I can be mixed and feel like oh you know there's a brother African or African American right you know right here so. That was that was the that was the good feeling when we when my first time I, I landed here in the states. So that was basically your first impression was the was the demographic of the United States the 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 the, the, the fact that you could see yeah. African yeah, African American yeah. people yeah. like I you you, you could relate black. right yep. you could relate yep. you could relate that made you feel at home. All right. Yep. So how was the first gig? Oh, the first gig was oh you you don't want to know. So, <laughs> so we. We we sh we shut down New York City right. the center where we're playing. Mm -hmm. um, I remember that there's so many people came right, and the fire truck. Then I don't live here, so I don't even know what the hell is going on. But right, basically police came in there by midnight. Mm -hmm. There's too many people in the venue 
than the permit required. Oh, so you guys were over capacity. Then, yeah, then, then we just about to start over 2,000 people in the venue and Whoa. we're about to start. We're about to just on stage and the fire marshals and the police came in that they got to stop the show because there's too many people in there <laughs> and so many people lined up outside. Wow. So I may tell you this story and there's a video to prove that. Mm -hmm. Police came on the stage stopping us and then there's a one song that people love, they want to hear. Like right. women are screaming. Right. So one lady go to the police officer, I think the officer in charge or the, the supervisor, mm -hmm. and started talking to him and started teasing him. And you know how women can get away with things? Right. The women started talking to the the, 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 the officer. Right. And then the right. officer get a little excited. It's like, you know what? Play that one song and cut it off. That's it. And boom, we started playing. <laughs> bam, bam, bam. Well, well, what was the name of the song? Do you still remember? Oh my God. Uh, I think it's Akonoba. 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 Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, uh, well, well, it's it's one of a hit song of mm -hmm. Ghanaian artist, Kodwe, Mr. Kodwenfi. Okay. And, uh, and, and that song you sang in what language? It's sung in in in, in twi. Twi, twi. Now let's yeah. talk, let's talk a little bit about about um languages. You you are actually you are actually fluent in uh twi, right? Correct. Yeah, and and, and, and that's uh for those that don't know, twi is the language spoken primarily in the country of Ghana. Correct. Right now, um, so you you get that experience of you you just shut down the venue that you guys have played. You're like, okay, America has got to be great, right? From a musician perspective, that's a dream come true, right? Come to America and be able to shut down a venue. Absolutely. They yeah. call it, they, they, out there, they call it, who is this guy? Is it African Michael Jackson? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah that, was, so, that was the good feeling. Right. So then you got you guys pick up, and um, after that, did you, um, then you... We did Chicago. Mm -hmm. um, we played in Atlanta. Okay. And then we, we played in the DMV. And you guys did, and you we, guys we, did four months in the United States. Yeah, yeah, four four shows in mm -hmm. in one month. Wow. Yeah. I mean, one oh, four shows in one month. Correct. Okay, so, so you guys week, every week we play, you know, different states. Got you. Okay, so you guys were here for four weeks then. Four weeks. Okay. Yep. And, 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 and that basically became your okay. This is the country where I want to be for the rest I of my life. Be, exactly. So yeah. right after the tour, we went back home. Mm -hmm. Um, I came right back. So that that was home. That, that was for you. That was this was home, and there was correct. Not, yeah. So you, you get back here and of course, um, at that point, you're still a professional musician. You, you, uh, playing bass and you, yeah. you started a band. Yeah. I right. came here. I did some gigs. I did mm -hmm. gigs with, uh, you know, I was a shabu, you know, when we call shabu, like a gig guy. Uh -huh. Okay. Um, so you, I you are basically a gig, a gig musician. A gig musician. Yeah. I was playing bass guitar, for, you know, Sunday for a church. And then on weekdays, mm -hmm. I'm touring with a different band. There's a there's a big group here in Kenya called Gigi Gigi Maji Maji. Uh huh. Um, Gigi Gigi were, Maji Maji. Yeah, Gigi, from Gigi, Kenya. Maji, yeah, they were right. a big deal there. Mm -hmm. We were on tour. I did a gig with uh, Ziggy Mali. Ziggy. Um, from Jamaica. Know, uh, yeah, from Bob Jamaica. Marley's son. Paul. Yep. Sean Paul. You know, so yeah, you know, you name it. Share a stage with uh, Cheka Khan and Dion Warwick. You know, on hmm. Horizon Jazz big, Festival. Big names. Yeah. Shaka yeah. Khan and Dion Warwick. Yep. Legendary names. These are not just big names. These are legendary names. That's it. Indeed. No, that is yeah. great. So at that, at that point, you basically play. And who is the guy? Who's the guy that kind of gives you the... Because, you know, when we get to the diaspora, there's always this one person or this someone that sort of kind of gives us that bit of leeway in the process of, okay, listen, come gig with us. So, so for you, it was the Kenyan band... Um, they gave you no, that well, leeway or there was somebody that actually well, yeah there was somebody uh -huh. um i did a gig with uh there was a legendary musician from togo that was living here okay um itadi boni itadi boni yeah yes mm -hmm. itadi, itadi, itadi boni the, fa the father of uh the father the yeah father, not the kids. right the, the, yeah the father yeah the son the son the son's name is not itadi tabi tabi, 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 boni. tabi yeah tabi boni yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Itadi, the father, is the is, is 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 the guy that I was gigging with, including uh, Jacob Nikumbango. Okay, from Cameroon that play Sweet Mother. The right, guitarist. right. Yeah. So, so, so okay, with... okay, okay. Now, now you bring in, <laughs> dude. <this. laughs> see, see. Now you see why why I'm telling you that it is important for us to have a forum like this because see, you just mentioned two names that today. 
unless you have been in the studios back in those days, you would not know those guys. You wouldn't <laughs> remember those guys. Like, I mean, Itadi Bune, I mean, that's one of the greatest guitarists that we had over here. And um, same thing with Jacob, right? Yep. And, and, yep. and, 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 and funny they're all thing, lit now, my God. Right. Indeed. Indeed. You know, mm -hmm. may they rest in peace. Yes. Yeah, indeed. May they rest in peace. And and there's something actually great that um, Tabi Bonet did um Bonet did for his father. And um what, what Tabi did, he actually started a coffee and um uh, a, a coffee brand with his father's name. Oh and, wow. And, yeah, and, yes, yes. He started a coffee brand with his father's name and, and that's a that's a real great thing. One one of these days I'm gonna I'm gonna have Tabby on the, on this show so that he can Please also do. give yeah, us definitely. that portion. Because yeah. because there's a lot that um uh, that Itadi has done. Uh because I mean I remember meeting Tabby when Tabby was, was was at the time I think he was in school. He was still in college when I when I initially met him. But that's a story for for another day, man. So, time, right? <laughs> yeah, it's 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 about that time where we got to take another quick break, man. And when, when we come back, we kind of want to start talking about that transition from um, gig musician into your own band and then into uh, eventually into the film producer or the super producer, we should say, that you are today, right? So wh what song sh you think we should go into right now? And it doesn't have to be a diaspora song by you. It can be by any other artist in the diaspora at school. But if it is by you on a, or a collaboration by you also, it's okay. Yeah, I, I, I will throw my last music video collaborate, collaborated with uh, Wiz Boy. Okay. Uh, called, my, um, African Lady. Okay, so African Lady by Kobe Maxwell featuring Wiz Boy. All right, and you are listening to Diaspora Central. And today, by way of Ghana, directly from Washington, D.C., we have super producer Kobe Maxwell. This man has got fingers for bass, he's got a knife for the camera, and he's got a penmanship not only for songs, but also for stories, movies, and etc. Kobe Maxwell, welcome to Diaspora Central. Thank you. Yes, sir. Now, uh, before we went into the break, we were talking about you being a gig musician uh, once you were in the United States. So after being in the States as a gig musician, you eventually started your own band. What was the name of the band and, and what were, who were some of the members of that band? Well, the band was called uh, Sikenfutro's Band. Sikenfutro means um, in Ghana language, when we say Sikenfutro, we're talking about a golden stew, you mm -hmm. know, something represent, you know, gold or money. Okay. And, 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 by, and, and by Ghana language, you mean Twi? Yeah. Okay. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. We want to be specific because we want to, we want to represent the culture. Right. Yeah. Cause right. We, yeah. Right. Now Ghana, Ghana, band, does, does Ghana have called... additional languages? Quick question. Be, before. Oh yeah. Yeah. We do. We, okay. Yeah, we have, we have about 13 to 14 languages. Okay. But the most prominent are Twi, 
is the tree. Okay, yes. tree, tree is the most prominent one. Okay, yes. all right. Yes. So you you were saying uh, you, you you did have a band, and what was the name of the band? Uh, Sikam Futro. Right, and um, who who are some of the members of that band? Well, the members were uh, all over. You know, there's Ghanaians that we whenever we we you know we play. Sometimes we have a saxophonist and trumpeters come from Chicago. Clumboy, mm -hmm. Kudi. Okay. Um, they come in for the horn section. Mm -hmm. uh, the guitarist was Joe Pompo. Okay. Um, and the drummer was uh, uh, Kankeni uh, Kwekusmo. Right. And I was on bass, and then um, uh, Noah was on guitar. So we even recorded. We have a recording at Q Studio in Virginia. Q right. Recording studio. Okay. So there was yeah. there was the recording studio that you where you guys would do any any recording at. Yeah, live recordings. Live yes. recordings. Got you. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So that was the band we were playing in the in the community, mm -hmm. the Ghanaian community, and also other you know the diaspora community. Right. But uh, we do gigs on every you know the occasion, Black Fest, uh, Black History Month mm -hmm. festivals, and so on and on parties right. and you know. Now at that at, and at that point you were you were you guys were playing pretty much all types of all styles of music, right? All, all genres, music. right? African music. Yeah, Correct. you you, you were doing music. all genres of African music. You guys were Correct. including Afro jazz. Correct. Right. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Okay. So that, that gives us, uh, you know, we play reggae, we play Afro jazz, we play African, you know, old high lives, mm -hmm. uh, we play Zouk, right. um, you know, and so on and on. So, we, you know, at some point we stationed at um, Bukum Cafe, which was our prominent location that on the weekdays we played it and weekend we go outside, outside gigs. Right. And that, that was uh, Bukum, Bukum in uh, Washington. Yeah. In Washington, D.C. Washington, D.C. Yeah. Right. Yes. Yeah. So you got indeed, indeed, <laughs> indeed. So of course, not not, not forgotten Zanzibar. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Now see, now you bring in real names for those for those <laughs> that really know Washington D.C. Because when you talk Zanzibar, Zanzibar in a day was, was the place to be. Only only the ones who were someone could actually do either a gig or promote at Zanzibar. There was no no real no no small fish um <laughs> place, right? Can I tell you a story quick? Yeah, yeah tell me a story. Just, we we got time for stories. Mm -hmm. Zanzibar was the last location, last venue mm -hmm. that I went to the backstage and say hello to my dad, him a Sakela. And that wow. is when the last time I played with him in Africa, I have not seen him again. But I kind of communicate with him. Right. And when he saw me, he's like, my son, what are you doing here? I've told you, don't leave our blood for too long. You should go back home. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. Yeah. The, I mean, it's amazing. The patriotism and the love for Africa that a lot of the, that generation had. Uh, is, isn't that interesting? Which which actually kind of brings me. Well, what's your take and what's your feel on, on, on 2019 being the year of the return? For for Africa, for the Africa diaspora to Africa, how how was how was your feel about that? Well, w what I could say is it was long overdue. Uh -huh. um, I think um, that that definitely was a, you know opening door and a gateway right for for all diasporans to know is that you are more than welcome home. Right now, you know, Ghana now now Ghana is one of the countries, one of the few countries in the world, um, and that's for our audience that may not know. Is one of the very few countries in the world that actually has a policy in which any American of African descent can actually go live in Ghana and acquire permanent residency, right? Correct. Right. Uh, uh, and and right. Th th there are more for more details, people can always go and, and check out the um embassy of ghana yes. yeah Correct. but but definitely it's one of those uh promising countries that is worthwhile visiting and definitely a good introduction into the african continent if you have never been to africa and you would like to go yep yeah yep. so let, let's now get into the stage in which kobe maxwell starts to put out albums okay what was the first album and and what triggered that um, I would say the first album was was a gospel music. Mm -hmm. um, when I came here, I was also, you know, uh, giving back to the church community. Right. And as a musician, giving back was playing my instrument every Sunday, mm -hmm. you know, helping the church, uh, right. praise and worship. Right. And at some point, they, they wanted more of me. They, mm -hmm. they feel like I have a lot to give. Okay. So, and I, I'm coming from a world music, secular music background. So right. any, ever, anything about church music was 
kind of new to me, but I put professionalism that, you know, if, if we do profes- professionalism in the world, right. I'm more so of God. Indeed. So, you know, I put in a whole different level of, you know, church music to the, to the congregation and they were in love and they're feeling that I could give more. They would like to hear me when they are home. Mm-hmm. And that is where the pressure came in to record something. Okay. And I couldn't record high life to church. <laughs> so I have to record yeah. the gospel music and that's gotcha. when I it's my first gospel album. So you started doing uh, praise praise music praise and the oh, Lord. Yeah, praise so praise the Lord. Praise the Lord was your first um gospel that's, album. Yes, right. Yes, and album. then after after that you did a, you did um uh, your second Pepe album, Le. what was it? Pepe, Pepe Le. Pepe. Right. Pepe. Now give give us a little bit of a story on Pepe Le because Pepe Le that's uh that's actually not Twi. That's uh Lingala. So That's Lingala. Right, that's Lingala. So give us a little bit of story on, on, on Pepe Le. Well, I have been always been very uh, a unique African Ghanaian uh, mm-hmm. musician that, you know, African rhythms is always my, you know, something that I definitely enjoy. And I have been exposed to, you know, Congolese music, mumbu, uh, uh, marumba, mm-hmm. um, you know, sukus, right. uh, you know, and dombolo. Got you. And, and I, in the mix of The people around me, I have a Congolese, uh, Blaise Tangelo, mm-hmm. uh, who is an amazing Congolese talent. Yeah, shout out you know, to Blaze. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. This, yeah. this, this, this man, you know what? <laughs> the world haven't got to know a lot of, of what Africa has produced, but right. Blaze is one of its, you know, one of a kind. Indeed, indeed. So, um, you know, with, ex- with insp- inspiration with Blaze, and I started recording, and with him producing the album, mm-hmm. and we exploring things, and I felt... Lingala is the sweetest and beautiful language that yeah. I wish I could speak Lingala like still <laughs> right? doing like I speak Cree. You know? <laughs> you know, so, it's, it's funny. I used to think the same thing until I started to hear Swahili. Yes. So, yeah. Once yes. I started to hear Swahili, I was like, okay, Swahili is a, is a it's, it's, it's an interesting language. But you are right. Lingala, Lingala, it's, a, it's like you don't have to be singing and you don't have to, you don't have to be cool to sound cool when you say something in Lingala. It's, it's beautiful language. Yeah. And I'm, I'm still, I'm still, you know, push. Sometimes I go to YouTube and go to my YouTube university to, mm-hmm. to learn. Right. To learn Lingala. To pick up But Lingala. Anyway, so, mm-hmm. yeah, so um, Blaze inspired me to translate this particular song mm-hmm. we do it with African rhythm um you know and collaborate with you know Chi English and Nangala mm-hmm. and you know the, the love I have for the language I learned I translated you know the song into Nangala and learned it and able to um sing that that pepele in in a different language pepele pepele ya na bela yesu nako pesa ye mikuma nanga nyo so kona tigala pepele right you know It was beautiful and that was the blow in the diaspora. Yeah. No, I, I remember that song that song was big. That song was big and I, and I, and I, I mean I, at, at that point I was kind of I was I was kind of part of that that mix so I, I saw some of that stuff coming coming out and uh, there's someone that you got that, that got to be mentioned on that song, you know, the guy who played your guitar. You remember yeah, 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 his name? Yeah, Jerry. 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 He's a Congolese. <laughs> yes, he, he moved back home. Very Jerry. Right. Jerry kind of delivered on that song. That, 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 oh, yeah. yeah he, oh, and, and he did both rhythm and solo, right? Yes, he did, he did both. Mm-hmm. And, and um, the, you're the one who did the bass on that guitar? I did, yeah, I did the bass. You did the bass. Yeah, so at that point, you mo- you're moving in, but, you know, just as you had become this hot praise music artist from Africa in the diaspora, All of a sudden, everybody just sees a new song, secular song comes out and it's like a whole different level. <laughs> Take us through that transition. What kind of led you to that stage? Um, well, you know, we, 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 tra- we always, I'm always inspired by society mm-hmm. and, you know, culture, things that is happening. Okay. And I like to share my talent with it. And, 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 you know, if it's positive, support it. If it's negative, try to influence the most you can influence them mm-hmm. with, with, our, with our talent. Right. So I saw Ghanaian culture drifting to a different thing. And when I go back home, I see young ladies, you know, having all this, um, you know, dress code mm-hmm. that they think it make them cool. And right. I felt that, you know, they pretty much have a wrong perception that yeah. you can dress like that, but in the right place. Okay. And I you know, cut to the chase. Um, 
you know, with the, with the society, what was going on in Ghana inspired me to, you know what, I know I'm doing gospel music, but I, I want to speak on, on this particular culture, these young ladies are picking mm -hmm. from, from the from the Western world that they think is cool. Right. You know, so that's where I decided to go to High Life and produce the High, uh, High Life album. Okay. Not only, the, not only the album, but also the first, you know, Ghanaian artist to do uh, music videos and... Mm -hmm. And, and CD together in compilation in one day. So there, so there was, so there was a, a, a CD DVD combo. Correct, correct. And, and you, you, so you're the first Ghanaian musician to put together a a, a CD DVD combo. Yeah, if oh. you go way back there, mm -hmm. 2007. Right. Um, you, you well, I mean, that. yeah, I mean, the first is the first. You can take a first because once, once you're the first, you're the first. Nobody else can go back and take the first away <laughs> from you, right? So you're the <laughs> first. And, and ladies and gentlemen, now you have one of the first right here on Diaspora Central. But let's take a very quick break again, Kobe Maxwell, because we got to listen to a, a little bit more of... Uh, your stuff or we got to watch a few more of um of the things so what, what do you what do you want to do now when we come back we're going to talk also a little bit about your 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 new passion which is film and uh television shows but um so what, what what do you suggest we take a look at right now one one of your movies or um one of well, your songs we're, it's up yeah, we're going to talk about movies let's let, let's let's visit um paparazzi eye in the dark okay take a look at paparazzi the eye in the dark so take a look at this quick trailer of paparazzi the eye in the dark by kobe maxwell and you are listening to diaspora central with gil english in the big city they lie and wait watching and i Viewing the world from a jaded lens. To some, they are a nightmare. But to others, it is a dream yet realized. And for Rich, becoming a photographer I should give it a shot. was more than an ambition. Yeah. Ghana's hottest musician. A photographer's dream. We want to work with you exclusively. As you want me to give you exclusive pipitone right to mess up my life? No, 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 Mr. Max. Um, actually, we, we are upcoming photographers. Good work, man. You're going back here with me uh, have a work. And dreams become success. You need to move whatever you have on the front page of your next edition. We have the scoop of the century. But faith has a dark side. Can't stop his face. How do you blend the paparazzi? If there's no action, they have no photographs. This is not a regular fan, Jackie. It's Rose. Now she wants masks. Oh, I will shock her into a little piece of We have a history of the two of them fighting over. If I see this picture in the newspaper, I swear to God, I will pick it up. And we are back. If you have just joined us, you are listening to Diaspora Central with Gil Inglés. And with me, I have via remote from Washington, D.C. By way of Ghana, Mr. Kobe Maxwell, or should I say, Mr. Producer Kobe Maxwell. Bass player, gone, music producer, and now film producer. Kobe Maxwell, you become you becoming like this media empire, man. Well, let, let it be. We, we want to become a territory of Africa. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> hey, there's, there's one thing, there's one thing that we always should appreciate, right? If we if we have asked for and we have worked for it hard, it's okay to get it, right? Oh yeah. Indeed, indeed. Because I mean, after so let's 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 get back into um Kobe Maxwell. Kobe Maxwell goes from gospel into secular music. What what was the title of the first album? The first secular uh, album? Oh, I'm aware. I'm aware. Give us a little story because there's a story behind that. I'm aware. Uh, I mean, you 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 spoke you spoke a little bit about it, but <laughs> I, yeah, I want the details. Did. I want the details. We we gotta talk <laughs> about the details that made I'm aware the special song that he became. Come on. Well. 
Well, so I'm aware with the collaboration with Vida, you mm -hmm. know, and Vida was, you know, one of the, she was diaspora Miss Ghana USA. Mm -hmm. um, and um, she has amazing, she's beautiful, amazingly beautiful young woman there. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm, I've just met her. Okay. And um, I feel there is more than just the beauty and, you know, the, the modern and all that stuff. And, right. and, you know, surprisingly she can sing, but she don't, she have not ever even explored it to see that if she can sing or not. And I encourage his head and we, I'm like, come to studio. Right. Well, we decided to do I'm away because then those kids, young girls back home, they wear, they, they dress and they show their tongue. Okay. You know, kind of showing that, you know, they're sexy. Got you. So, so basically, what, 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 just, just to clarify for our audience here, because uh, we, we got visuals of that, and we're gonna try to show. So basically, that, that they, they would wear their um, either pants or skirts, but still show the top of the thong. Correct. Okay. All right. That's, that's right. So that, that, that was that was the inspiration for I'm Aware. That's what inspired inspired I'm Aware. You know. So if right. you watch the video of I'm Aware, you know, back then YouTube was not even 1080p. So, Got you. Which means the video will pull up. Then it was the was the top of the right. video, the top top resolution yeah. that you yeah. that you top resolution take back then. then. <laughs> <laughs> hey, yeah. And on that right, and on that song you had on that song you actually had collaborated with uh, Vida, right? Yes. Uh, and, uh, did you remember yes. Vida's last name? Vida Dakum. Dakum. Okay. And um and, and and you you had other songs in that project, other big songs. Yeah, 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 that was, that was uh, mm -hmm. Abiba on that on that album. Right, and Abiba was more of a the, the diaspora, and you know, mixed the, with a francophone beat. Yeah, know, I, I, Ali. yeah, I think I think Abiba made you diaspora's um, most famous musician. Yeah, because yeah. The, I mean, the way we pull Abiba on on a Maway album, right? People knew that there is more to that. Mm -hmm. There's more to that particular song than what we had. So. Right. We have to bring an Ivorian producer, mm -hmm. uh, Denis de Latif, and did a remix of of Abib, and that's where we did a collaboration with the DJ Tasmo. Right. So, so that song collaborated uh, Denis Latif, de, Denis Latif, and uh, DJ Tasman. Yes, sir. <laughs> Man, Abiba. Now, c'est doux, c'est bon. <laughs> and what what's the meaning of Abiba? Explain that to our audience. Well, well, Abiba simply means, you know, normally we name Abiba from the northern part of Ghana, mm -hmm. you know, that culture, the northern culture, and, and other countries name Abiba, Savarion, Senegal. Right. And it simply means beautiful. Beautiful. You know? gotcha. and, 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 and literally, they're not just beauty in, in person, you know, natural beauty, but mm -hmm. also inside. Internal beauty. So yes. basically, a, a, a true beautiful person. Yes. All right. Now, so let, let's now go. Let's 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 go ahead and move on because we're getting short on time, and this conversation is so good. But but goodness gracious, time flies when the conversation is good. So Abiba exactly. is out. You move on into your um next record. Which one was it? Because you 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 had a lot of you dude. You had like a, a whole bunch of hit records, and then you collaborated with just about everybody who was who in the diaspora. So let's let's go into the last record that you did, and what was special about that. Well, after Biba, we went to uh, do it. Uh huh. So now I well, wanna do my drink. Yeah. I'm a do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. What was special about do it? Oh, the, do it the, was the album. special. Because yeah. Remember, we we have come out from Abiba and people, the fans are demanding. They they are happy. They want something more. Mm -hmm. And 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 um, you know, at that point, we got to come up with something. And then also the industry was changing a little bit. Afro pop is becoming, you know, something a new. Bit of, in, you know, new coming. Right. And I got this brother from Liberia, Chris mm -hmm. the Shield. Chris the Shield. Yeah. And, yeah. And, he penned, he so, penned the song for you. I'm sorry? He he wrote us, he wrote, he, because Chris the Shield is known as a, as a songwriter. He's a songwriter. Right. Yes. Chris mm -hmm. is a songwriter, but he's a singer. Right. And we collaborated, wrote the song, mm -hmm. you know, he wrote most part of it. I wrote my part and right. we, we threw that track and boom, it was fire. It was the, it was the banger. The <laughs> literally, that's literally produced. Remember, after Do uh, Do It Came, right. it's when I produced Paparazzi. And so the soundtrack of Paparazzi is Got literally you. Do It. Got do you. It Got was you. the music that made Paparazzi the movie. Right. Because um, as we even talking about paparazzi, now that we on the, on the movie scene, on paparazzi also you had collaboration of other artists aside from you. Because I I remember on the credits you had um, Irina from Angola. 
right? Yes. Um, yes. You had uh, Paul G from Angola. Paul G. And yeah. um, um, did you have Bruna Tatiana also from Angola? On, on? Yeah, Bruna, Bruna Tatiana, Bruna right? Yes. Yeah, yeah. So, so, and and that song, I, I mean, excuse me, that movie actually ended up producing With one person that today has become part of the culture and mainstream culture. So, give us that story because I'm not even want to do the spoiler on that. Well. You're the, you're the man behind it. <laughs> you, 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 you produced the soundtrack for, yeah. for, for paparazzi. In, indeed, indeed. But remember the movie, though. The movie had someone important in it, Dencia. Oh, Rapidencia. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, man. We, we got to connect all the dots here, right? Because Dencia yeah. is one of the actresses in that movie. She yeah, was... she was up and coming. Mm -hmm. I'm already in Atlanta. We, yeah. we already have our cast and everyone. We are ready to shoot. Right. And... And there's this role that just part of the, the characters mm -hmm. and the person we cast to play um, coming to visit, we have just arrived in Atlanta trying to, you know, situate ourselves and start shooting the next day. Right. And then she uh, came with the girl who's going to play the role. And I quite remember either these girls were coming out of club mm -hmm. because they reached our, our house right. around 5.30 or 5 a.m. in the gotcha. morning. And if you look at Densia's dressing and everything, I knew these girls are coming out of club. Got you. <laughs> and, and as soon as I saw her from the window, right. I called my director. I said, this girl looks like somebody we can have her play this role. Got you. She can fit it. And my director looked at her also from the window right. upstairs. And it's like, hmm, she looks more like it. And we meet her and I'm like, yo, I have a role for you. Would you, would you be able to play, a, you know, it's, it's kind of an interesting role. Mm -hmm. And she's and her English was not even like you can't literally hear her accent because right. she's frank. Right. You know, and she's like, yeah, I can do that. Yeah, you know? You're right. Anyway. Then boom, we put it on the row. The next day we start shooting. Mm -hmm. And that's what and, and what really made her feel like she can sing right. is you know, paparazzi is a music, um, you know, musical musician and photographer store. Right, right. So there is a scene where Densia is in studio mm -hmm. and, and acting singing right. as, as a, in a backup singing Got of you. me, of me. And, and, and she was just mommy, like just saying, yeah, back here, but it, yeah, but but I'd live it. I'd live And then, yeah. you know, at the end we put a music, I mm -hmm. think Elena's music there and it sings so well, like her lips and everything sings like she right. was really singing the song. Gotcha. And I think that inspired her that she can be a singer. And, and that's how, and that's how she went on and and but I mean one great thing is Densia today she has become also a prominent figure here in the diaspora culture because she is the face of white niches correct white the, 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 yes, the, the, the product for the skin yep. product yeah yep. so moving moving on because we we approaching that man we approaching that time goodness gracious brother we 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 approaching that time I don't even want to take a break anymore we're just gonna talk through this so paparazzi the eye in the dark is out of the way there comes the next movie what was it um one night in Vegas one night in Vegas whoo <laughs> to tell us now let's go to the let's go first to the hits of one night in Vegas because one night in Vegas that was um because there's something about paparazzi that we didn't mention on this um on this interview that it was something groundbreaking also paparazzi yeah. the eye in the dark one it was groundbreaking in the fact that even ended up getting the production a feature on the Washington Post magazine correct correct right and uh, and and they they they, they basically let's go through those through that process what was so groundbreaking about that movie that made made that movie what it was well well yeah if if i can correct that mm -hmm. um paparazzi literally introduced because i collaborated with an american filmmaker mm -hmm. uh tim Wilson, right um you know whom we 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 both sat down right. and realized what it was lacking mm -hmm. in you know and it was also just like when african african american movie started back in the days right you know you know the audio sound lighting right. and stuff well, yeah you know, so Tim Tim came in, came in with mm -hmm. me and we sat down and you know kind of structure what is missing with that because the stories are beautiful the right. actors are talented right but a lot of technicalities were lacking indeed so, indeed 
we came together and fixed that. And paparazzi was the one break break that you know that bridge. Yeah. That you know lighting has to be right. Got Audio you. has to be right. right. The location has to be right. Right. And after there was we a- did all of that, it became it really started inspiring people doing. You know, to, 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 he raised right. he raised the bar he raised exactly. the bar he basically exactly. he basically elevated the bar not not just really for for movies in the diaspora but even for nollywood because he, he, he raised the bar of what the standard for an african movie in america was correct right correct. And, correct. And, 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 that, and that is to lead us to a, a one night in vegas the right. next the next production after paparazzi mm-hmm. and one night in vegas is when washington post decided to follow Right. Um, for African movie making in America. Oh, it was right. So that, that that's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. So I stand corrected on that. It was not paparazzi. It was one night in Vegas that actually in- gets the feature, the six page feature, not just a feature, a six page feature on the Washington Post magazine. Magazine. Correct. Yeah. You know, you know that I'm still mad about that article, right? <laughs> because I'm like, I did I did like the I did the theme song for that movie and I'm there's not a picture of me on that article, man. Well well there wasn't a picture of me on that <laughs> article as a producer, which which was surprised because they, they had their professional photographer right. um take me for a day, a whole day to do photos in the locations. Right. You know, Chevy Chase and yeah. all over the place in the woods, but it didn't get future, didn't but guess up. what? Yeah, they told the story Indeed. of Africans Indeed. diaspora doing, you know, a project of that magnitude, right? Um, to expose, you know, how talented Africans really um, were, and an industry that is growing rapidly. Yeah, uh, Nollywood and African movie in general. Indeed, you know? indeed, and and shout out, shout out to Betty, uh, Betty from Ethiopia. But what what, what is Betty's? Um, she she actually sang on the theme song for One Night in Vegas. Which you wrote the song and composed it. Uh, yeah, uh, yes, sir. Blaze, 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 Blaze. I did, I did the writing and the the vocal production, and Blaze did the composition on that song. That song actually did go places, right? Because we did end up getting a nomination in Ghana for right. um for for uh, for the Ghana Awards too. So yeah, yeah which which man, good things, good days, good times. Goodness gracious, time flies. So now there comes Kobe Maxwell. And I'm going to set this one up this way. My phone rings and he's like, dude, I have an idea and it's the wrong one. So I'm like, okay, if it is the wrong one, I don't need to hear the idea. Just don't (laughs) tell me. He's like, no, 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 no. So tell us what was the wrong one and what was the shift that made you go into the wrong one? Well, so when you look at Nollywood, Mm -hmm. we have been looked at as an African filmmakers that, you know, we, our storytelling is always, you know, love or drama, mm-hmm. which is true. It's, right. it's cheaper to do drama. Right. But I always want to, I'm always inspired to do, take a challenge or things that is different from what everyone is doing or ever, everybody has done. Mm-hmm. And um, the wrong one started to, to tell a whole different genre yeah. of, of a story. Right. And, and also believe that, you know, Africans can explore something different genre in the movie industry. Got you. And wrong one was a horror movie. Yeah. You know, but of course I'm from Africa. We don't, we don't really, you know, we already have a superstitious life. Right. <laughs> Every aspect <laughs> of our life is, is scared. <laughs> right. Indeed. So Evan Littleton is scared us, but at right. the same time, I wanted to tell a story that, you know, we can, you know, we can have this whole stereotype that, you know, black people are scared of everything. Yeah. And, and white people go look at everything that is scary. They, they're trying to see what is there. Yeah. Now, since then, I know that you have been busy doing other things. I mean, pl- plenty of awards. And I know you got you got those with um, throughout your career. We haven't even touched on those, but our time won't allow us to detail Kobe Maxwell in one single interview. So you may have to come back eventually you you may with you we probably have to do like four interviews one for each stage of your career so that we can detail everything that we need to detail but um before we go there uh, before we go off the air though there's something that I, I want you to talk about which is the new initiative that you got going on right now let's go on and talk about a little bit about it tell us what you got going on well so since we you know i don't know but i guess we have been blessed to be the first to always initialize something right and i think what we just finished working on it's it's going to be pretty much a first um african 
reality show mm -hmm. uh, produced in the diaspora. Gotcha. Um, you know, so we just finished shooting My African Love with Ifia Odo, mm -hmm. uh, which is a, a reality show that focuses on a young African woman who is been, who is born in America. Mm -hmm. um, she want to have a relationship and her parents want her to have uh, an Aganian man to, to be in a relationship with and she don't feel that she, you know, she can fit into the culture, but based on culture and parenting, right? she decided that if she's going to consider that she want to have, you know, different African guys to, to explore who can fit the kind of a man Got you. that you want. Gotcha. And this show has brought the whole continent together, guys from all over part of the African continent. Yeah. I mean, together to do this reality show mm -hmm. and it, it's, it's, it's fun. It's, it's great. It's a great start. Yeah. And you're going to love it. People going to be amazed what we're able to put together for you for 10 episodes in 10 days. Got you. 10 episodes in 10 days. And that's, uh, what's the title again? My African love. My African love. <laughs> The super producer Kobe Maxwell by way of Ghana, directly from Washington, D.C. This is Diaspora Central. I am Gil Inglis, and it's been a pleasure to spend this time with you. Kobe Maxwell, you have to make me one promise, brother. You will be back to do another interview with us before the end of the year so that we can talk a little bit more about this. Um, Correct. My yes, African, my love. African and, love. Yeah. Hey, so we can you, talk. You have me any day, anytime. Just, um, just let us know. We will be in there for you. You are a legend and you do what you do and we always support you. Got you. What you do, and I, we can always come in. I appreciate that brother. Definitely appreciate that. Appreciate the love. And remember that this is home for you. This is home for us, man. This is for us, but us all day, because at the end of the day, remember if we don't do it for ourselves, who will? And we need to answer that question every single time we think about doing something. For those of you that have just joined us, you were listening to Diaspora Central with Gil Inglés. And the interview that we just finished was with Mr. Super Producer, Kobe Maxwell. So until next time, thank you very much, Kobe. Which song should we take Should take us out? I would say maybe let's do Do It. Do do It. All right. So let's go on and do it with uh, Kobe Maxwell and Chris the Shield. Until next time, peace. Oh, Chris the Shield. Well